by the Holy Ghost for triumphant living. Because glory only answers by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Empowered by the Holy Spirit for triumphant living. Empowered by the Holy Spirit for triumphant Because the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to make profit. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man for the purpose of profit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. He said, For the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Every man. For what? To profit without. So the Holy Ghost is given for us to to make profit, not losses, not damage, no reduction, but advancement, progress, profit. Somebody, you are entering your era of unusual profit. So, enjoyment of the spirit is ordained for our profit. It brings us to the life supernatural, the higher life, progressive life. Advancing life, God kind of life. We've established the fact, either though before now, that the Holy Ghost is the third person of the Godhead, is our God or the guide, is our helper as a comforter, is our guide, is the power of God that work in the believer, is the one that will the plan and purpose of God. You will live in this life without him. You can't make much. You'll be limited. Jesus says, it's expedient for you that I go away. If I go, the comfort I will not come. I've given to you to make the most of your life. Your destiny is a risk without the effectual working of the Holy Ghost. It gives you the supernatural life. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Remember, so we see the operations of the Holy Ghost, diverse operations. The Bible says, read from you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 4 to 6. Let's see the diverse operations of the Holy Ghost. As he empowers us to fulfill our destiny in Grand Star. He said, now they, there are diversity of the gift for the same spirit. We're reading it down to 6. And there are different of administration but the same spirit. And there are diversity of operations, but it is the same spirit which worketh all in all. One spirit doing great works. Let me show you an example of his work in Isaiah 45, in Zairus' life. In Isaiah chapter 45, from verse 1 to 3, Isaiah 45, 1 to 3, Thus said the Lord to his anointed, that anointed one was the Holy Ghost coming on him, to Zairus, whose right hand by the spirit have hold it to subdue nation before him. In other words, when you have the Holy Ghost, you become a subduer of nations. I will lose the lands of kings and open the tulip gates. And the gates shall never be shut. You carry the spirit, gates cannot be shut against you. I will go before thee and make the crooked path straight. When the Holy Ghost go before you, the crooked path, difficult path, are made straight and plain. He said, I will break in pieces the gate of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. That's breakthrough, supernatural, other plan. Now look at verse 3. He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness. You are not prosperous on the Holy Ghost empowers you. That's why he said, I will give you power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8, 18. He said, and I will the hidden riches of secret places. Riches, true riches are hidden. They are hidden. They are not in the surface. That's why Jesus said to Peter, launch into the deep by the Spirit. And in God, is breakthrough. That that might tell know, I am the Lord. What am I saying? The Holy Ghost coming on you gives you the supernatural life, supernatural breakthrough. Look at another example here, Isaiah 61. He came on Jesus. He made all the difference. Isaiah 61, we read from verse 1 to 8. He makes you have double portion. The Spirit of God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach good tidings, not bad, to the meek. <laughs> when the Holy Ghost comes, only good things happen. 
He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted. You see, this is why when we preach, people are blessed. The Spirit, the, the Holy Ghost makes people get blessed because the word is Spirit. And to proclaim liberty to the captive. You know that what the Holy Ghost is responsible for freedom from captivity. When the Holy Ghost comes, he, he, he breaks captivity and bondage and limitations. And the opening of prison to them that are bound, any form of prison that anyone is, the Holy Ghost breaks the prison. I don't know what represents prison in your life, but today is broken. I said today is broken. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of the God to comfort all the mourners, the Holy Ghost comfort the mourner by executing vengeance in the camp of our enemy. What a what an awesome mystery! Now look at verse three. He said, "To appoint unto them that mourn is Zion to give them beauty for ashes." That means to beautify your life. Your life shall be beautiful. And the oil of joy for the morning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness is the one that replaces your heaviness with joy. What the Holy Ghost does for you is what money can buy. When you have the Holy Ghost, you are just excited. They say, what has happened to you? I can't tell. I'm just filled with the spirit of joy. Do you have money in your pocket? I don't need to have money. I have what is more than money. Spirit of joy. Hallelujah. He said that they may be called the trees of righteousness and the planting of the Lord that they might be glorified. You always bring glory in people's life. Let's read on verse 4. The Bible says in verse 4, it says, And they shall build the old waste. In other words, every decade, wasted, industry, business, the Holy Ghost empower you to build again. <laughs> and they shall raise up the former desolation, and they shall repair the waste cities. That means you carry an anointing that your presence begin to repair by men as if there's no crisis. Am I speaking to somebody here? Somebody who came for the wedding yesterday he said, Sir, how are you surviving this crisis? I said, Crisis? No, oh, I'm just hearing crisis in your mouth. <laughs> Listen to me, you create an atmosphere for yourself that you desire. God told you from His word, He said, You shall be a territory taker. Let me tell you how our problem is we are operating with our physical senses, operating by the things we see. Listen to me, it is fact that there's crisis, but it is truth that it is not affecting you. Fact is inferior to truth. Truth is superior to fact. I refuse to be affected by crisis. Is it? Does it mean there's no crisis? There is. That's fact. But I operate in the realm of truth. The realm of truth. You define what the outcomes of your life. Can I pray for you? You will never be a victim of negative consequence again. He said, they shall raise up the former desolate and they repair the waste cities and desolate the desolation of many generations. And what more? Verse 5. And strangers shall stand to feed your flock. Wow. Strangers supporting your ministry, supporting your career, supporting your businesses. Feeding your flocks. <laughs> and the sons of aliens shall be your plowman and vine dressers. What do we mean by this? Aliens are strangers. People you don't know coming to support you. They say, ah, I'm working in your organization. You don't you know me? Say, ah, I am the 504 staff that you have in your organization. Say, wow, I don't know. Okay, now I know. Praise God. You see, some of you are employers of labor. If you are here carrying your certificate looking for a job, receive this prophecy and change position. You shall be an employer of labor. And verse 6, he said, I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost can do. You better receive it this morning. He said, but ye shall be named the priest of the Most High. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentile. Hey. Riches of the Gentile you shall eat. <laughs> you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And their glory shall you boast yourself. We are in the season of glory. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of glory. He said, their glory shall you boast yourself. If anything is happening at all for good, you should be the one it's happening for. And what more? Verse 7. He said, And for your shame, you shall have what? Double. Get ready for double portion blessing. And for the confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. You shall possess double in this land. He said, Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Glory to God. Did you hear what God is saying this morning? This is your season of glory. I thought you'd say a better amen. amen. The Holy Ghost led me to speak on what I want to speak on this morning. Power beyond the tongue. And I'll tell you the reason why. Most of the time, I won't talk about Holy Ghost. Most believers think that the Holy Ghost is just pray in tongue. Just pray in tongue. Now, praying in tongue is minimal amongst what the Holy Ghost came to do for you. It's, it's the kindergarten, primary school impact. There are 
more. So the Holy Ghost led me to talk to you this morning about power beyond the tongue. Many people think that having the Holy Ghost is just praying in tongue and that's where it ends. No. Many people pray in tongue and they are still failures because they don't understand the content of the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Listen carefully. You have an iPhone. That iPhone has many functions. But all you do is WhatsApp, phone call, send mail. That's all. You are using less than 3% of the function of that iPhone. Am I correct? Some of you have iPad in case you don't have iPhone. You have iPad. Your iPad has more than 600 functions. But you are not using it to do much like me, including me. I'm also a victim. I have an iPad. I only read Bible, read books on it. I don't even use it. I don't, I'm using less than you know 1% of what it is meant for. Why? There are many things inside that I can use it to do. But I'm not aware. That's how the Holy Ghost is to most of us. You have the Holy Ghost, but you're only playing in tongue. I want to show you the power beyond the tongue. A few things this morning. And it will blow your life and destiny. Your life will change. If you're that person, I thought you say better amen. Just In other words, the ministry of the Holy Ghost came to make you a voice. In other words, you are not permitted to be voiceless. You are not permitted to be in the hiding. You are not permitted to not to be recognized. God came to make you a voice, make you to be heard. We saw how the apostles were locked up when the Holy Ghost came. He shoots them for their ministry became known. They became a voice. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. We read it from verse 1 down to 8. You see something here. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 8 quickly. So when you speak in tongue, it's not just, it doesn't just end in tongue. What is tongue doing for you? He wants to make you a voice. Make you heart. He said, and the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And verse 2, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them a cloven tongue like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. Fire is sitting on your destiny. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues and the Holy Ghost gave them all. they began to become a voice they were silenced before they were shut up before but now he made them a voice now verse 5 the Bible says and they were dwelling at Jerusalem the Jew devout men out of every nation under heaven verse 6 now when this was noised abroad the multitude came together and they were confounded because every man heard them speak say with me they will hear me Everyone heard them speak in their own language. And they were amazed. God will use to do amazing things. And they marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? It became a wonder. Their voice was heard. Before they were locked up, before they were afraid, before they were hiding themselves. But suddenly the Holy Ghost came and said, Look, you are supposed to be the voice that hearing in this city. No other one should speak until you have spoken. They should hear what you have to say. And, and they, the Bible says, And how hear we everyone of our own talk where we were born? Somebody under the sound of our voice, they will hear your voice. I said they will hear your voice. So the Holy Ghost does, does not want us to remain soundless, voiceless, useless. He wants you to be a voice. If I may bring it down to better understanding, he wants your business to be a voice. As a medical doctor, you should be a voice in the medical field. As a music minister, you should be a voice. You know why most music that we sing does not fly? It has not been in power. It has not been in power. That girl, what's her name again? Uh, 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 Chiwe, that sang one song. Jesus, you love me too much. Less than five minute song, but the whole world is hearing it. What? The Holy Ghost just breathed on the whole song. And that song has sold millions across. Why? The Holy
Holy Ghost came and made that song a voice. As a music minister, you need to be a voice. As a minister, as a, a, a ministry, you need to be a voice. In your business, you need to be a voice. Your family need to be a voice. That they hear the name of your family. They reckon with, oh, we know that family. They are known for something impactful. Everything that shut up your voice shall catch fire. In the name of Jesus. Any padlock that used to shut your mouth, shut your destiny, shut your voice, that padlock is scattered in the name of Jesus. Your generation will hear your voice. If you are the one I'm talking about, you say better amen. It's so important. You should carry a sound that should be heard. The Holy Ghost met me and gave this word to me to bring it to you. Because after now, they will know you. You see, you don't need to ask people, say, don't you know me? You don't need to ask them. When they see you, they say, oh, we recognize you. Why? Impact. Because you are a voice. You are heard. Hey, somebody I'm talking to, you are that person. They will hear your voice. It is an anathema to be voiceless. It's a paradox to be voiceless. How can you be living and know nothing is coming up from you and you say you are spirit filled? I, I doubt it. You can't be a spirit filled and not have something generating impact dimensional. Everything that shut your voice is destroyed this morning. Number two power beyond tongue is that it supplies the supply of utterance the supply of utterance. What do we mean by this? It's not only making you a voice, but it supplies what will make you hard. Utterance. Act chapter 2 verse 4. He said, and the spirit gave them utterance and they began to speak with other tongues. Utterance. What that means is, not just are you a voice. You know there are voices that are just echo. They're just echo. They're just sounding. Nobody's listening. Nobody's hearing them. Why? No utterance. No supply. The content of their voice is not worthy of listening to. So the Holy Ghost does not only make you a voice, but it supplies utterance. If I may put it another way, it helps you to over deliver. It helps you to know what to say. It helps you to know what to do. The kind of business, the kind of career that will be unique to your own grace, your own gift, in your own self. Something that will make your world appreciate and patronize. He gave them more trance. He supplied your trance. Not just giving you a song as it were, but the kind of song bless lives and they will go for the song. As a pastor, the kind of message that people will listen to their life will change. Not just shouting here and there, no. But the content of your, you know, your, 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 your voice is thick. Is rich, is impactful, is life transforming. As a student who's filled with the Holy Ghost, you're not permitted to fail interview. You're not permitted to go to interview and they say, No, we don't need you. When you finish talking to them, they say, Hey, even if there's no opening, we make opening for this man. He has something to offer us. That's what the Holy Ghost came to do. That means you deliver, you over deliver. You write the exam, you pass. Why? He supply utterance. The last fellow you saw is the last you ever see. If you are that person, say better amen. amen. In Luke chapter 12, from verse 11 and 12, Luke chapter 12, 11 and 12, look at what it says. He said, And when they bring you unto the synagogue and unto the magistrate and power, he said, Take you no thought of how what you shall think you shall answer. In other words, don't bother yourself what to say. I will supply utterance. Or for what you shall say. Are you seeing it now? Don't bother yourself. What shall I say? Well, how would I get inspiration? Which word would I answer? They are sent for me. Like they said for Joseph. What shall I say? Look at verse 12. He said, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you what at the hour. What you shall say. Am I talking to somebody here? Something you will say that they will listen to. Something they will identify with. 
something worthy, something impactful, something life transforming. Hallelujah. You say something, they say, wow, this man is, is, is they carry something. Because the problem why many are rejected is this they, 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 they carry nothing. They are suffering miscarriage. So as a believer, you're not just praying in tongue, but the Holy Ghost is supplying all trans. People meet you for the first time, they fall in love with you. People meet you and you tell them, well, this is what I want to do. They are moved to support what you do. Why? The Holy Ghost supplies all trans. From today, set forth your hands here. The Holy Ghost will supply all trans to you. It will supply all trans to your business. It will supply all trans to your endeavors. If you're that person, say better, Amen. So it's a power beyond tongue. Power beyond tongue. Number three, he empowers you to generate news. He empowers you to generate news. The Holy Ghost came to make you a news generator. You become the news that may read. You don't need to go and be watching uh, season one, season two, season three. You do it. There's news inside you. All you need to do is to align with the Holy Ghost to bring out the news. In Acts chapter 2, verse 6, where were they? Look at what he said. Acts chapter 6, 2, verse 6. He said, And now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and they were compounded because every man heard them speak in their own. They became news. Every man was reading the news. So they were not just speaking in tongues, they were news generator. The first tongue they spoke, as we saw from that scripture, people gathered to, 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 to hear them, to listen to them. They became a news generator. They, were, they became a wonder. Somebody under the sound of my voice, you shall be taught a wonder. I say you shall be taught a wonder. You shall be a newsmaker. In the name of Jesus. Newsmaker. Your, your life is a news. Positive news, impactful news. Shout hallelujah. So it's a power beyond the tongue. You need to know this. Your voice shall be heard. You shall be a newsmaker. You see, it's an abuse of redemption to come to this world and live and die and go back not known for nothing. It's an abuse. I made up my mind that Lord, my voice must be heard. I don't care. Anyhow, whatever it takes. Holy Ghost, I can't have you and be an ordinary person. No. I forbid it. So I began to find out what does it take, what steps it take, how to go about it. Go through the process of you know, building, cooking, working on yourself. It takes a lot. You will die to self. Give him his place. Glory to God. Your generation will hear you. And number four, power beyond the tongue. Came for you to command influence and audience. He came for you to command influence and audience. In other words, the Holy Ghost makes you, he processes you as a man that the audience responds to. A man of the audience. Now, we have read also again Acts chapter 2, verse 6. Look at what he said. When we say audience, we're talking about crowd, multitude. You're a businessman, you need crowd for your business to profit. You need customers to come from far and near. And the Holy Ghost has a ministry in that business to make it so. Make your product a much sought after product. The Bible says, and when this was not abroad, the multitude came together and they were confounded. Why? Because every man heard them speak in their own language. So multitude came together. So the Holy Ghost makes you a commander of crowd. Every spirit filled believer should be a crowd pillar. Every spirit filled believer in business, be a medical doctor, be a pastor. This is the reason why they listen to some pastors. This is why some pastors struggle. The Holy Ghost made them a crowd pillar. People want to listen to them. Why? The Holy Ghost is turning them to audience commander. They are saying things that is changing people's lives. Look at verse 14 of that same scripture. Verse 14. Verse 14. Are you there quickly? He said, go to verse 14. They were gathered in one place, in one accord. And verse 14, 
Bible said, now Peter standing up with the lemon lifted up his voice and said, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you this day and hearken unto my words. Crowd has come. He said, now listen to me. I'm commanding all this. I have something to say that you should listen to. Why? The Holy Ghost. Remember, this was the Peter that locked himself up before. Bleeding. By hiding. Man who rejected Jesus. Who never identified with him. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, he stood. He said, hey, hear me now, all of you. All of you who came Jesus. He was speaking with some sense of openness. The dryness, their limitation became they became replaced with population. I don't know anyone here experiencing any form of dryness. Dryness in your business, dryness in your career, dryness in your bank account. I decree by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, it shall be populated again. Your account shall be populated in the name of Jesus. No more dry business, no more dry ministry, no more dry life. In the name of Jesus, you shall become a center of attraction. If you are that person, say the better amen. So it makes you a crap pillar. And all the, now, hear me from today. When you talk, people will listen. When you make demand, they will respond. No one will have capacity to reject you again. If you believe this word, you say better amen. And number five. Number five. Power beyond the tongue. He came to impact excitement and momentum. The Holy Ghost came to impact excitement and momentum. You see, until you possess energy, you cannot realize your destiny. The Holy Ghost came to impact excitement and momentum. Momentum talks about acceleration, progress, motion. Speed, energy to go forward because you need energy for progress. Most people are stagnated because they lack momentum. They need, you know, every object is in a state of rest until a force is exerted upon it. Newton thought law of motion. For some of you who need physics, you know what I mean in your university days. Because the force of motion, the Holy Ghost came to give your life a force, give your life progress, cause you to go forward. Look at this, for example. Most of the time, people plan and suddenly they forget the plan. They plan. Certain time, you just find yourself you are heavy, you are confused, and they can't place it. You just find yourself you want to do something. Suddenly you are forgotten. Suddenly you find yourself heavy, sad, find yourself confused. But you can't tell why you're confused. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're just angry. You say, why are you angry? I don't know. I'm just angry. I'm just angry. What you need is momentum. You need momentum that only the Holy Ghost gives. That energy makes your life go forward, makes you make progress, empower you to accomplish your destiny and grand style. And that's what the Holy Ghost can do. I prophesy in your life. After this morning, your life is gaining momentum. Momentum like never before your life shall gain in the name of Jesus. If you are that person, say it better, amen. Why is that important? It's important because <laughs> most of the time there are many things that want to stop you from getting progress. They call it obstacle. They call it barrier. They call it limitation. But let, let, me, let me define it as the Holy Ghost gave to me. Some of these force against your momentum Why you did that is number one is terror. There are people who set the area they are is resisting their grace, resisting their unction, resisting their potential and capacity. For example, if you're a medical doctor in Bermuda and a medical doctor in America with the same level of, you know, privileges, you discover you shine more in America. Why? Two of us. Environment. Territory. Some people, another thing resisting their momentum, their progress, their advancement is enemies. 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 We want to rise. They say, no, we must not rise. Some are powers in your father's house. Powers in your mother's house ancestral power powers of the activity of your ancient fathers these are forces trying to stop you trying to resist your momentum some are occultic power some are you know people around your environment who hate light who doesn't want to see people make progress or rise 
these are, you know, forces, witchcraft, necromancers, forces trying to resist you. But now, the cure to that is the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is a spiritual bulldozer. He bulldozes all those forces so that you can make momentum. I prophesy. Every altar, every witchcraft, every occultic power that want to stop you, they shall catch fire. I say they shall catch fire. Any witch doctor that points you or mention your name, their altar will spit, spit them with fire. If you are that person, say the loudest, Amen. After today, your life is receiving divine speed. In the name of Jesus. So you need the Holy Ghost. It's not just praying in tongue and ending there. It's much more than that. Much more than that. My, life, my prayer for you from today is your life is gaining speed. The glory God has kept the place for you, you shall realize it. Now, but quickly before I close this morning, I haven't showed you the power beyond tongue. How do I maximize the ministry of the Holy Ghost as I close? How do I maximize the ministry of the Holy Ghost? How do I maximize the ministry of the Holy Ghost? We have seen that the power beyond tongue includes the release of voice. He came to make you a voice. He came to supply all trans for you. Be a medical doctor, be a lawyer, be a pastor, be a businessman or woman. He wants to make your family a voice. He doesn't want your family shut up. He wants you to be a news generator. He wants you to command influence. He wants you to command audience. He wants you to be a crowd puller. He wants you to make you a man of the people. He wants you to so, you know, it wants to impact you with the excitement and momentum for progress. But the question is, how do I maximize his ministry? How do I make these things become a reality in my life? Three ways. Number one, live upright. They call him Holy Spirit. He works with those who are holy. Live upright. Live upright. Stay away from bitterness. Stay away from envy. Stay away from things that does not define. It doesn't matter how long you pray in tongues. If you are not living upright, you will still be limited. It's a waste of time. This is where most people also get it wrong. No matter how long the length you pray on, it's a waste of time. Why? You are not living upright. You are not connecting with the frequency to which we can connect with you. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. He said, let your garment always be white. Let your garment always be white. Let the head lack no ointment. Clean up. Be upright. Live holy. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23. Proverbs 1 23. He said, Turn ye to my, my, you know, my reproof and I will pour my spirit upon you. Turn to my reproof. Turn at my reproof. In other words, stay with my correction. Don't be angry when people correct you. I told someone, I said, It is pride that make people reject correction. Can I tell you something? It's always better to have people correct you. They are molding your life and destiny than rejecting against it. Man is full of this pride to reject the reproof. Look at it in the scripture. Turn to it. In other words, don't stay away from it. Don't reject it. You know when people correct you, they become your enemy. Sometimes you even keep malice with them. Sometimes you stay away from them. You want to go to people who embrace your error. They just live your life with no progress. Those are the people you like. Your true friends, your true destiny helpers are those who want you to be aligned in order. Those who can correct you. Those who cannot correct you cannot impact you. If you stay with people you are doing wrong and they can't tell you that they don't, they don't really love you. Turn at my reproof and behold I will pour my spirit that's the anointing, the Holy Ghost on you and I will make my ways worse known to you. You become a access to my secret. You be in charge. You be on top. So you want to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Be upright, upright, be upright, upright. Avoid envy, avoid bitterness, avoid backbiting, avoid anything that you know is not of God. Stay away from carnality. Stay away from carnality. Number two, live in obedience to the word of God. Live in obedience to the word of God. The Holy Ghost, you want to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Ghost, obey the word. It's the word he authored. So as he authored the word, he has his blessings in the world. Obedience to the word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, thou shalt, if thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all that is written therein, I, the Lord, will set you high above all nations of the earth. That's the impact. 
That's newsmaker. That's breakthrough. And all these blessings shall come up and I will set you high above nations. When God set you high above nations, that's it. You'll become a newsmaker. But the key to that is obedience. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mind. You shall meditate in it day and night. And observe to do according to all that is in it therein. Then you shall make your way prosperous. You shall have good success. Obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the word of God. Be a man and a woman that's obedient to the word of God. Obey do for the instruction to engage in your life. That's how to maximize the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Is the author of scripture. When you follow the instructions of scripture, you are in this frequency to announce you as a new thing. And of course, number three, pray abundantly in the spirit. Pray abundantly in the spirit. And before you check, three hours, you're still praying. Lero Shegiyama, Gonga, Gengo, Susi, Ziza. Lero Shalaba, Gabalada, Nana Maga, Denani, Nani, Maga, Galadiza. Three hours, seven hours, ten hours. You are building. You see, I'll teach you in the second service. When we pray in tongues, most of the time, people think it's just a praying tongue. No. You are, you are developing the potentials he put in you. I'll teach you that in the second service. There's a potential in us that we have left dormant too much. We just pray in tongues, talking that just say, for praying sake. No! It's much more than that. Like I said, praying in tongues is kindergarten. It's the primary school level of the realm of the Holy Ghost. There is what we call graces, giftings. I'll show you that in the second service. So, pray in tongues massively, abundantly. Jude 20, because it's only one chapter. He said, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You're building your energy, your faith. You are coming to a frequency where the Holy Ghost will walk more with you. You're speaking his language. He speaks your language. He smoke you with his function and presence that brings about the transformation in your life. So, to maximize his ministry, you pray in tongue abundantly, massively, regularly, consistently. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, look at what he said as I ran up. He said, he said, despise not the gift that was given thee by the putting on thy hand. And he told us what that gift is. He said, For God has not given this. First, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and verse 7. What kind of gift? The gift of the Holy Ghost. You. He says, Stir him up. How do you stir him up? Wherefore I put in thee the remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. You stir it up by praying in tongues. You are stirring it up. When you put sugar and beverages inside the water, if you drink it immediately, it will not be sweet. Why? It has not been stirred to properly, you know, dissolve. That's how the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is in you, but it's in dormant. Why? You have not stirred him up. There are atmosphere of stirring him up, like the atmosphere of worship, the atmosphere of praying intensively done, the atmosphere of staying around where the word of God is. Where you hear the word over and over and over and over. You're creating yourself to come into the frequency, affinity, likeness, nature, pattern for which he operates. At that level, you can maximize his ministry. You can hear some voice. You can pick some instruction. He can bring you correction. He can unveil your, you know, the, his plan for your life and destiny. He can remove the things that are concerns to you that you never knew. He can help you know what to do that you don't know what to do. May the Lord bless his word in your heart. Did you receive anything? Jump up on your feet with another shout of praise. Lift up your hands. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Thank him. 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 Thank him.